All right, so this is going to uh, go through covalent bonding. All right, now uh, the last one we talked about with ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is when the in the, when the ions are created uh, because of a transfer of electrons. One's positive, one's negative, and they transfer. They become oppositely charged and they attract. All right, because remember, opposite charges attract. This one is covalent bonding. So this is a different type of bonding. I want you to think of the word a uh, co. Just that little prefix right there. Co meaning um, they share. All right. If co, if I co-own a business with you, I share ownership in a business. If I cohabitate, I share a house with you. If I, I don't know, think of other co-words. I don't know. But think of the think of the co as a. Uh, hopefully, you can use that as a prefix to help you remember that they share. All right. It's sharing electrons. All right. So we're going to talk about how this works. All right. I'll give you some visual aids. All right. So um, this is just two hydrogen atoms. All right. The Electrons are always in constant random motion as they move, and as you can see, as they get closer, look what happens. All right, those electrons, because remember, the nucleus is positively charged. The nucleus of an atom, uh, that's a proton, it's positively charged. So as it gets closer to the negative charge of an electron, all right, the, it, the nucleus here is starting to pull on that electron, and this nucleus here is starting to pull on that electron because these electrons are negatively charged. All right, so those opposite charges are beginning to attract each other, and they eventually get close enough to where they form that bond. All right, and so once again, as, as we move that closer, you can see that that attraction between them—it's bringing the the other one with it because it's the positive is being attracted to the negative. All right, and here's just a little bit better way to do it. It gives you a little. Uh, like a track. All right, it's been added to show. It says an image been added showing the attraction between the nucleus on the left and the electron. This one is not shown. All right, so as it gets closer, see what happens as it's being pulled. I right, can see it's being stretched. All right, when two atoms get close enough, we can see the nucleus on the weak, leftly attract, ooh, leftly, weakly attracting the other atom's electron. All right, and the same thing. It's starting to pull on it, and now it has an attraction toward both. All right, so this will, this has an attraction toward both to fill that first level, that first level. So when the two atoms get closer, the nucleus on the left have a strong attraction toward the electron. We can see that they spend most of their time between the two nuclei. Now, if you if we have, we drew both on there, you can see they both have a strong pull toward those electrons. So they're shared electrons, all right, because they're both having a pull on those. All right, and so it's a covalent bond, and, and it's funny because it's it is considered sharing because they both are using it. Like if I go back to the slide, they both, you know, this has two in its outer shell, and this one has two in its outer shell. They're both kind of using it, but they're kind of fighting over it because they both have that strong attraction, that positive and negative attraction um, between the nucleus and the electrons. And so uh, um, they're trying to attract same electrons. Neither one is actually able to take one from the other. All right, and that's called when that happens when they equally share them like that, where it's put in the middle. That's called a um, nonpolar molecule. All right, because there's an equal sharing of electrons. All right, and you're going to write this in your notes. A polar molecule is when there's an unequal sharing of electrons. So when one atom is going to pull on it more than the other. <clears throat> All right, and so the reason with the region in which periodic table you find they attract the electrons more strongly. I right, remember we talked about where the, where is the electron affinity greatest at? Right, it's going to be where they want to pull on those electrons, where they attract them. All right, that's going to be your nonmetals. All right, so covalent bonds are going to occur between nonmetals, all right? Because they have the strong, they both have they the nonmetals have the strong pull on electrons because they want these are closer to having a full outer shell than these are over here. Remember these that's like, yeah, if we can just get rid of them, our next level will be filled. But these are so close. Remember, we want to be like these noble gases. They're so close to the noble gases, they're gonna have a stronger pull on those electrons. So covalent bonds occur between two nonmetals. So on the test, I'll just give you options. It'll be like, hey, what is this lith what is this atom and this atom? Is it an ionic or covalent bond? General rule of thumb is going to be if you have to go across the periodic table, if you have to go across the periodic table, it's going to be ionic because your metals are all over here. These are all metals. All this all this white area is metals. All right, and I'm only going to really focus on these. I might throw an aluminum in there, but I, I doubt it. All right, and so these are your metals. So if it goes across, because ionic bonds occur between metal and nonmetal, but if it stays on the same side of the periodic table, it's two nonmetals. All right, so that's going to be covalent. All right, so because they're they're both going to have a pull toward electrons. Now the exception to this uh, is going to be 
hydrogen. Hydrogen hangs out with the alkali metals because it has one electron in its outer shell, but it's not one of those. All right? Hydrogen is not an alkali metal. It is a non-metal. Right? It's, it's a flammable gas. All right? So it does not fit in that group. The only reason it's there is because it has one electron in its outer shell. All right, so that is considered a nonmetal. So if I ask you, if I give you two elements, and I say is it ionic or covalent, if it's if it's two elements bonding on the same side of the periodic table, it's covalent. If they have to go across, it's ionic. The only exception to that is hydrogen, because hydrogen is a nonmetal. So if it's hydrogen in one of these, it's covalent. If it's two of these over here, it's covalent. Otherwise, if I'm going across the periodic table, it's going to be ionic. All right. Now, when we look at it, what what indicates that the uh, when there's a shared pair of electrons that are occurring uh, we usually is indicated that by a single solid line all right so one hydrogen is is bonding with another hydrogen all right now th they can share atoms can share more than one pair of electrons and that's where it gets goofy because it can be more than one pair whereas an ionic bond there's a definite formula well with these they can share more than one pair of electrons so like oxygen atoms when oxygen bonds with it another oxygen atom they share two pairs of electrons and that's called a double bond and then wait for it if they share three pairs of electrons that's called a triple bond all right and so um so in this case we have oxygen here sharing four electrons or two pairs of electrons all right and then nitrogen is the triple bond there six electrons single bonds are obviously the weakest uh, attraction triple bonds tend to be the strongest attraction all right, and so since they can share multiple pairs of electrons, we have to be able to name them. All right, and we've talked about this briefly. When you write a compound out, um, when something's part of a, a word, you have to add uh, part of a compound with an ionic bond, you would write IDE at the end of it. All right, so you'd write an IDE at the end. Oxide, 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 chloride. And that IDE tells you it's part of a compound. But then you see all this other stuff in here, and you're like, what the heck? Because nitrogen and oxygen, based on sharing different pairs of electrons, they can, they can, sh you know, the formula is not going to always be the same. You know, if I have, um, let's say, uh, you know, let me pull up the oxidation number notes real quick. Lithium and nitrogen, for example, lithium will always lose, have one electron in its outer shell. Nitrogen needs three, so the formula for those to always occur is always going to be. Um, lithium, it'll take three lithium to bond with one nitrogen. But that is um, not always the case with covalent bonds because they can share multiple pairs of electrons. All right, and so nitrogen and oxygen can bond a plethora of ways, and so you have to use these things called Greek prefixes all right, to, to help us. All right, so same thing, the second name, the second element in the formula always has an IDE at the end, just like an ionic bond. You have to have an IDE at the end, but you need to add the prefixes to the elements. All right. So like nitrogen, if it's bonded with two oxygen, you have to specify. That's nitrogen dioxide. That means there's two nitrogen. Di meaning two. If it was one oxygen, like down here, it would be mono, monoxide. Nitri monoxide. Mono e mono. One on one. Di. Um, to tri is three, right? like a tricycle. Tetra is four, carbon tetrachloride. Penta, just like the five surrounding areas, counties at Penta Career Center, five. Penta, Pentagon is five. Hexa is six. All right, so you have to use those uh, for that. All right, so you have to use the Greek prefixes to help you write them. All right, and here's, once again, here's the list. We do have to know up to ten. All right, so septa. Or no, pff, septa. Hepta is seven, octa is eight, nana is nine, and deca is ten. All right, so we'll have to know these. All right, I'm not going to give you these. You'll have to know. And this is we only do this for covalent bonding. All right. The only time you don't use the Greek prefixes is if it's the first, if there's only one atom in the first element. So like nitrogen, you wouldn't say mononitrogen dioxide. That would be incorrect. All right, so you do not do that. All right, that's just nitrogen dioxide. But if the second one is has one, like carbon monoxide, one carbon, and then it would be one oxygen, carbon monoxide, one oxygen. All right, so this would have two nitrogen. Now, that's only, you only don't do that for the, if it's one, if the first one's one. All the other ones, see, there's two nitrogen, so you'd put a dye there. But if the first one's one, you don't put mono. 
All right, so since this one is N2O, there's two nitrogen and one oxygen, I would have to put dinitrogen monoxide, one ni two nitrogen and one oxygen. All right, so you have to pay attention to how it's organized. Two nitrogen, one oxygen. Now this one has one nitrogen. Don't look for the mononitrogen. That doesn't have it's nitrogen since there's only one. Whoops. Dioxide. Where's that? There it is. See, that is not correct. It'll kick it back. It should. Let me see. Oh, that didn't work. What? Because it's just nitrogen. You don't do mono. All right. Same thing. Mono nitrogen monoxide. No. All right. It's nitrogen monoxide. And then here, once again. Two nitrogen, two nitrogen is dinitrogen trioxide. There's three. You got to look at the number that comes after it. Oxide. All right. Uh, I'll pause there. All right, so same thing. So since there's more than one, I have to put the di there. And you don't ever put an IDE on the first part. So it would be disulfur. Dichloride, the ID goes on the end, so there's two of each. Sulfur, since there's only one, I just say what it normally is, sulfur. Dioxide, disulfur, trioxide, there's two sulfur, three oxygen, disulfur, and then since there's only one oxygen, I have to put mono. The second one always needs a Greek prefix. The first one usually does, unless it's one, then you don't do it. All right, so to recap, Covalent bonds occur between two atoms when they're trying to, to basically have the same electrons, where they're going to share that pair of electrons. Covalent bonds, they always occur between two nonmetals right, that are sharing electrons, because remember, those nonmetals are the ones that pull the electrons more. The atoms in a covalent bond are, are more stable, lower energy together and apart. We kind of skipped through that. And then a single bond is two shared electrons, double bond, four shared, triple bond, six shared. All right.